Okay, I think it's just before 2 p.m. in Tucson. And so we'll start at this point. This is like a soldering iron. I think I've talked about this before. You can pick these up at like Amazon or maybe at a local store, hardware store. Comes with a whole bunch of tips. I just put a little pinpoint tip on it. And I set this to its lowest temperature setting, which is actually a little high, but um, it doesn't go any lower, so I make the best of it. So anyways, uh, you're probably going to need one of these, and so I just hang this off my bench pin. And let's see, I, I've got my safety glasses on, I got rid of the uh, my regular glasses, and so what I've come up with here, these are little, uh, the rubber bottoms, they're two inch, and they work with, with these flasks. And so what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna invest two of them because it's so much easier uh, than doing one, and it's easier to weigh out everything. So this right here is a mold I made with with a horse head in it. There we go. So I've cast this a few times, and I'll. I don't. I think what we're going to do is we're, we'll cast the skull. Uh, it's a it's a good one to cast. I've cast it a few times. It's already got a good sprue on it. Um, it's nice and hollowed out on the inside, and it's got nice fine teeth and open areas here. So, you know, it's a good. It's a good test piece. That's why I've cast it so much. And then what I can do, and this doesn't have to be, you know, after I cast this, I'm going to melt it down again. I'm not going to keep it. So this isn't going to be beautiful, but we're just going to take and right on the forehead. We're going to make a very crude looking I know I've been practicing my engraving, but I'm not going to take my time here. We're going to make a B. Okay, that's at least when it casts, you'll be able to tell it's a, what it was. And then the S. That's kind of an S. Okay, so we have BS for Ben Schaefer. He was one of the top three people that uh, answered my post or clicked like. So now we know which wax this is. And so then what I came up with and what I'll include with the kits, it's this, uh, this is kind of dirty, but it's like um, 3 8 inch sprue wax. And so what I do is I take, and I just take just a regular jeweler's saw. You can cut through. If it's cold where you are, it might crack. Here it's a little bit warm. I break that off. Push it right down in there like that. I got another one here already done. Push that in like that. Twist that off. I'm gonna take this. And I just push it right down into the center. And then I can take this, and it has a great sprue on there already. And then get some other wax that's, that's similar. And we're just going to seal this so that there's no holes.
all the way around. I once knew a jeweler that never sealed it on the bottom here. And occasionally, it was really dumb that he did that because occasionally it would release itself and float to the top. I, I don't know what his, uh, what he was thinking, but it's pretty crazy. So you want to seal this. You want everything to be nice and smooth. You know, the whole idea is that when that metal rushes in, you don't want there, you don't want it to uh, have strange angles that are going to create turbulence. So this is all smooth. And this, this makes it really simple for all you to, uh, to learn this. So from the back side, it looks like this. And so when it's cast, it's going to be turned over like this. And you can see how the metal is going to flow down nicely into this horse head. And so now with the skull here, we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come down into the center of this, kind of open it up like that. We're going to drop that down, and so the big thing here, and actually, what I'm going to do, now, the, the investing chamber will handle a flask that's about a quarter of an inch taller, and I'm, I'm making some of those right now. They're not done. Uh, they'll be available as an accessory at some point. And they're going to make, if something's tall like this, it's going to make it a lot easier. What I'm going to do is since this is free in here, kind of, I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to take my little saw. Hopefully you can see this. We're going to cut off the bottom of this. The heat from the <laughs> from the blade kind of uh, uh, fused it back together, but then we're going to push it back in there so we can get it a little lower. And now I'm going to take and I'm going to seal it nicely all the way around. This would be great as a live video. Something we can uh, work on. If I can get somebody in here that can hold the hold the camera. I don't know. I mean, I probably there's probably a button on there I could do. So, anyways, this is nice and smooth. It's got a decent sprue on there. Um. Sometimes what I like to do, this is going to be hard for you to see, it's going to be really hard to see, is take and maybe add a little bit of wax where the sprue meets the piece so that you have a nice uh, swooping, I guess, a nice smooth transition from the sprue to the piece. There. So I think we'll go with that. Now we'll do... So you want to make sure these surfaces are... Well, especially the surface that's on the top, you want to make sure it's nice and smooth because that's the side that's going to sit against your vacuum pad and create the suction. And if, if you got like a bump on here, you're not going to get a good vacuum. So. So we should be able to set that in there and we can actually 
You don't have to push it all the way down. Uh, I like to get at least a half an inch of space between the top of this wax and where the top of the investment is. Um, and I also like to have about a sixteenth of an inch below the rim because that creates a, a better vacuum than if you were to run it all the way all the way flush. So if we don't push this all the way down, there's going to be a little bit of a gap. Uh, and you'll see later that that doesn't make much of a difference. And so what I'm also going to do is grab a marker. See, I'm grab a marker and I'm going to write uh, B S skull, and that'll that'll help me remember um, which flask is which. So we got that one. Put the cap. And so now we got the horse. The horse is even better. It's going to be a little lower. You want to make sure that um, it doesn't touch on the two sides. That one fits in there really well. I still may not bring it all the way down, but I th actually I think I can. And right on this one. Horse head. Okay. So the next thing to do is take these. I like this blue tape because I can see it better than the cream colored. And just make it so it's about a half inch above the flask. And so when we invest these, which we'll do next, uh, the investment's going to rise, and this will help keep it from going over the side. So, let's see the... The skull ring weighs 1.8 pennyweight on my scale. Uh, you could also do that in grams. And so I'll take that 1.8 and I'll multiply that by 10, which is approximately the weight they figure to convert it over to silver, to sterling silver. So th this makes it easy. 10, 10 times 1.8 would be, we'd say 18. That'd be 18 penny weight. There's 20 penny weight in an ounce. So then I would add another half of an ounce. So that would be 30 penny weight. So that's what I have here. In it's been cast a couple times. It's just scrap sterling silver. And that's about an ounce and a half. So that's what I'll use when we cast this. So now I'm going to shut off this, this video. Um, and then we'll move on from here and, and I'll do an investing video. So I think that's it. Thank you.